Tell everyone who is Farwa T. Farwa T. Oh, that's a long story. Um, so I'm a recording artist from and singer songwriter from Doncaster. Um, I released my first EP um in 2021 November a few days before my birthday um and yeah I kind of just decided to do like a stripped back version um it's a little bit of a sore subject but obviously we'll get into that but it's what my EP is based on which is being a survivor of domestic abuse um what's the, yeah. what's the name of the EP so if so people want to look it up it's called Awaken so, okay, yeah. so Awakened by Farah T, just in yeah. case you want to um, have a listen to the EP. Thank you. Yeah, it's on all streaming platforms and everything like that. So, um, so yeah, but I started songwriting, um, gosh, about 10 years ago, but I kind of didn't have a lot of confidence in myself at that time to release any of it. I wouldn't let, I used to write and I've been going to the studio with my producer for years, but I just never kind of had the confidence and I, I suppose that everything that I did go through as well knocked my confidence so I just kind of kept it all to myself and then one day I let my friend listen to it she's also an artist and she basically said if you don't release this I will and she was and I was like oh okay <laughs> so that's kind of when I started taking myself a little bit more seriously and you know it's it's tough always with songs in general and um, but I think because what I'd been through, I'd used my songwriting as a therapy almost. So they, it was very raw. It was me and my darkest hours. You know, it was scary to think that someone would even listen to it or anyone who knew me would listen to it. So, but then I kind of came to the conclusion that my songs could also help people who are coming out of that situation or in that situation. And that then became um, the driving force for me to be able to not think about or worry about what people would think about me but to actually help others get through whatever they were going through. So are you saying that you got a lot of a lot of um, material on release? You got a lot of lot of acapellas and stuff on release. Is that what you're saying? You got um. So the EPs done. That's like a full. That's all released. Um. And like I said, I did that strip back. We just recorded it live with a band and plugged in. And I went, let's go. I want it to sound as raw as possible because that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, so I do have a lot of other stuff I'm working on. I've got a single coming out, um, hopefully the end of this year, um, called Superpower. So that's a little bit of a, a different uh, kind of vibe. Uh, but my, I kind of, I like soulful and like R and B, smooth kind of vibe. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what it is. Um, but yeah, this is a, it's a different take. This one, it's nice. It's a bit of a love song, shall we say? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're quite young anyway, Farah, but what was the younger, what's, what was like a teenage Farah T like? Farah T. Um, a teenager. Quite, quite shy. I was I was very shy um, in the sense of performance wise or anything like that. So I started off as a dancer, um, but I was very much, I used to watch MTV and record it all on my little VHS and I used to copy all the dance routines and stand with my microphone. And but I would never let anyone see me dance. I would never let anyone hear me sing, yeah. um, which is crazy. I know. Uh, so yeah, I just used to lock myself in the living room and tell my parents that they weren't allowed to come in their own living room. Um, and I just used to sing and dance for myself. And then one day, my sister just basically said, "Um." you're never going to make it as anything if you don't let anyone see you and that broke my heart but also a week later I was like in dance class I was in singing lessons and I was like I'll show you <laughs> so yeah. we'll, give it, we'll give it to my sister it made me kind of come out and have a little bit of confidence and but ever since then I danced when I was really young and then stopped and then started everything up again and just was like obsessed with anything performing arts or writing or drama or singing or anything anything like that I was then completely obsessed with and I was just it was just all go from there really okay you say really young like like that was a long time ago like you look really young now so <laughs> I'm older than I appear I think oh, okay. I'm not sure you know how old I am but that's why I'm just like thank you <laughs> Okay, um, so you, you, are you saying that your musical journey started in 2021 or are you saying it started um, way before that, but you you 
like your first when was your first gig then what was when was your first gig so as far as um, my first gig, so I used to actually be in a girl group as well. So I've kind of done the whole girl group thing. That's also how I started because that seemed to at the time just be, um, I, I like to work with people on a stage. I suppose it gives it fills you with confidence as well. And it's that vibe of being together. You're not on your own. Um, but I started off in a couple of girl groups, one with my family um, we were cousins um, and then we used to do all the competitions and all that sort of th thing. And then in 2019, so I gig as well. So um, I gig full time. I'm a singer full time. So I've always done gigs since I was about 18 years old. Um, but yeah, in 2019, I joined a girl group called Origin um, and our first gig is <laughs> a big one. Um, our first gig was a, uh, London Pride uh, and we performed in at Leicester Square and we were on the women's stage so uh, that yeah, was that must have been big yes yeah, you know really? just a normal first gig <laughs> um, so yeah so that was that and then obviously Covid came along and I mean we all kind of we're all still friends we all still gig one of the girls is actually in six now and the other girl is a recording artist as well um so yeah so we were all doing our own thing but it kind of just obviously we all fell apart a little bit in covid um is understandable um and then after that that's when I kind of I wrote I finished my EP so some of the songs I already had I've been working on this EP since since 2019 writing my own songs um that kind of really meant something to me. I always knew that I was going to do something with the experience and the pain that I'd been through, but I wasn't quite sure what. And I just thought, all I know is that me getting this out is helping me. Um, and then obviously I, I get to be creative at the same time. So getting it out on paper was easier for me than talking about it. To sing about it was a lot easier. So and it healed me. It healed, it healed you? Yeah, thousand percent. It heals yeah. the soul, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, just basically uh, auditioned for Open Mic in 2021 and then ended up as a grand finalist, which was incredible because it was all my own songs. Um, you could obviously audition with covers and things like that, but I decided to grin and bear it and not be scared anymore. And the minute I kind of sent that song out, I just felt completely liberated and I was almost like, what have I been so scared of? Still absolutely petrified, but... I was so proud that that had kind of got me through the first stages and then I just carried on from there and got to the grand finals. Um, and then to release my EP, I decided to put on a event, so like an EP release party, as you, if you would. And I performed locally and performed with other artists. I had some people come from London and and things like that. And basically did a whole night, sold tickets and all the proceeds went to a local uh, charity called Phoenix and also um, Women's Aid. So all the proceeds. So I, I did that and basically performed my EP for the first time in front of a lot of people, a lot who mm -hmm. I knew, family. So that that just was it from then on. I was just like, OK, let's go. <laughs> OK, so do you, when you say you produce your own music, do you like actually... Um, like electronic production on a computer as well, or you mean you write your own lyrics? Yeah, so I write all my own uh, songs. Um, I do have a producer who I've known since I was, gosh, I want to say 19, um, that I used to just go and record with and have, you know, kind of build my confidence in the studio and that sort of thing. Get And he's, he's a drummer and he's in a band. He's, you know, he was signed when they were younger. They were called Rattlebox. So I went to him because I was like, he knows his stuff. Um, you know, he can really help me on my journey. And also we're really great friends now, which is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I just use him but then also I have uh I've just started getting into dance music as well so I have a producer called Brett Wilde um who is Manchester based but they're two completely different things but I kind of like it I'm kind of dipping my toes in everywhere and so we've just finished a song as well so that should be coming out next year oh nice one so <laughs> who are your musical influences tell me Farah who influences oh. It depends what day it is, to be quite honest with you. Um, I've always loved music from, even from when I was younger, obviously Destiny's Child, I mean, come on, you know. Um, and then kind of growing up, I listened to a lot of, so my auntie, I used to stay at her house quite a lot. 
uh, and she used to listen to a lot of Frankie Valley um, and that sort of thing. So I'm very much in love with like Nat King Cole and Billie Holiday. I absolutely adore them. Um, but then I do love my R and B. Um, I love rock music. Um, but I do absolutely adore a few artists. But one of them in particular, she's called Neo. Um, she's a, you will have absolutely heard of her. She's amazing. Um. So yeah, she's definitely like a huge influence on my music now as I'm developing out of that kind of um, era of telling my story. Obviously now I'm onto the next part of whatever, you know, is coming next for me as an artist. Okay, okay, cool. So do you have an agent or do you find your own gigs? Um, No, just my own gigs. So we were... Because you Myself. do some big gigs. Just letting everyone know, um, at the end of the video, I will put up some clips of Father T. You do some big gigs. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I do have agents for that. So it's obviously when I said before, I touched on, um, so I'm a full-time singer. Um, and so I gig everywhere, basically. So it's it's amazing that, that you know, I get to do that and only that. Uh, and it gives me time and so I can work in the studio as well through the week and, and work on my music. And then I gig pretty much every week. Um, so yeah, I get to travel all over the world and we do cover shows. We do Motown shows. We do my shows. We do absolutely everything. So for that, I have got like a few agents, uh, but on the artist side, as of now, I am an independent artist. So I'm releasing everything myself with the help of obviously other artists who are friends who help and put me forward for things, which I'm always grateful for. And then I end up getting gigs out of that. And it kind of just, it's just that networking game, isn't it? I suppose, as well as an artist and just making sure you're constantly pushing yourself and getting your, your name out there type thing. What is your, so what is your preferred genre of music that you would like to, to produce overall? What would you prefer to be making? So this next um, EP uh, that I'm working on is definitely like R&B soulful type vibe, uh, very chilled and laid back. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going now. Okay. Oh yeah, because you're in the moment. You're one day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very much what the moment is. Okay. So tell me some artists you would love to work with. Anyone out of like all the big artists, celebrities out there, who would you love to work with? Tell me. Anyone. Honestly, Neo. I'm completely, I would love, love, love to perform with her. I think she's, again, amazing. Um, And do you know what? Like, some of the old school, like, I'd love to perform with, like, Ashanti. Like, okay. I would still love, love, love Ashanti as well. I mean, I still do, but she hasn't released anything yet, so I just have to be obsessed with her from back in the day. Um, Yeah, just like Neo, Ashanti. I love Usher, um, anyone like that, really. Um, I'm a huge hip hop and R&B fan. So definitely anyone along them lines, I would just be like, yep. <laughs> so what do you think of the new style of R&B and hip hop? No comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the face reaction. Because <laughs> you're thinking, yeah, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's been uh, it, down, hasn't it? It's not, it's not the way it used to be back in the day. It's no, just... and I know things change and whatever, and that, that's a great thing musically, you know, that we're progressing, but, but not I feel so great. Like... Sorry? But not so great now. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I hate that I'm going to say this, but I feel like everything in that, it kind of all sounds the same. And yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's just not what it used to be. Um, like I said, I am older than I look, but I used to, I had such good times like going to the club when I first was allowed to go out and it was just all R&B, everything was like R&B, but it was just even old school R&B. It just, all of it is incredible and it's all so different and different sounds and yeah, it will leaps and bounds ahead of what it is now. And yeah, yeah I'm just not, I'm not feeling any of it to be quite honest with you. No, That's probably enough. why I like Neo so much because she's just got, she knows, she knows. Do you know what I mean? She's got a good vibe down, even though it's like her music's quite like electronic funk, but R&B soul as well. So she's kind of mashed everything together. That's why I'm, I'm honestly, I keep talking about her, <laughs> but I'm just, I love her. I think she's great. <laughs> so tell me the best piece of advice someone has ever given you to you in regards Ooh. to the music industry. 
Oh, well, it's not so much advice. Well, it is advice as well. But um, I think nowadays, because on social media, yeah, everything's very, everyone, we know that everyone just puts their best bits up. Um, that's another reason why I like sharing my story, because it's not a great bit, <laughs> but it's true and it's real. And a lot of people relate to it. Um, but the, for the rest of it, you know, you're constantly trying to put things out because it's almost free promotion for yourself, isn't it? Like, especially as artists and things like that. But somebody once just kind of said to me, like, it's it, a lot of it's smoke and mirrors. So just keep working hard, keep doing you, you know, don't follow all the trends because obviously we have to stay current in a sense. Um, but also just be true to you as an artist and don't try and copy others and just just remember it is a lot of smoke and mirrors and I was like okay so yeah so you've just kind of got to keep it's 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 so easy to look over into everyone else's garden see how they're doing obviously you know what I mean but if you just keep your eyes on yours you'll get to where you need to be in your time and in divine timing and I'm a really strong believer of that just let everyone do them always you know support each other and be there for each other because at the end of the day we're all trying to do the same thing uh, and we're all just artists so instead of kind of looking at I know numbers are important and things like that but try and remember that it's like about the art and it's not about TikTok and it's not about Instagram views and things like that we've, we've kind of got to just remember like where it's coming from instead of trying to compete with each other with numbers instead of being an artist I like that. That's a great answer. It made me emotional. No, no, that did. <laughs> <laughs> have you come across any negativity for, from any, for, have you come across any negativity in the industry or has it all been positive? Oh God, yeah, of course. Yeah. I've been in this business regardless of, you know, um, the music side of it. I, I've been in it for a long, long time. And yeah, there's. it's not as bad, I don't think, as it used to be. Um, for me anyway, I haven't come across anything, but yeah, back in the day, you'd get told like, you need to lose weight. You need to look like this. Um, yeah, I've had, we've, I've had all that and on like tours and things that I've been on and, um, yeah. So, but that's like back in the day. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, that's still a thing. You always get trolls. You'll get trolls just online and things like that, but I tend not to really care. <laughs> What okay, let, let's manifest something together, all right? Okay, okay. You have sold out 200,000 tickets at your mm. own show. Yeah. Who are you booking to open your show with you? Who am I booking Tell to me open? Some artists. Tell me some artists you are booking to open the show with. Um, okay, well, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to shout out my friend here. She's called Natalie Gray. Um, and she's an incredible synth pop artist who okay. has stood by me, to be honest with you, through this entire thing. So definitely, always. Because she's incredible. And also, like I said, you've always got to be there for each other. You've always got to, you know, put each other, if you can help each other at any point in your career, you know, that's who I'm going to do it for. Okay. And a, apart from Ashante, what A-lister would you book? A-lister? Oh, we'll just say it. I'll just say Beyonce or Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy I one. I don't think <laughs> they're going to be opening for me anytime soon. But <laughs> but you said. You never know. You know yeah. Manifestation, yeah, you know manifest, what I mean? yeah, what you manifest, you just never know. See? <laughs> so your first gig your first ever gig was it in a club a festival a bar where was, where was your first gig my very first gig ever was I think it was like a freshers week it was like a big uni there were like thousands of people there and I remember thinking oh my god <laughs> and I don't think I've ever been so scared in my entire life but at the same time I came off stage and I just was like, yeah, this is it. I'm, I'm in. Like I'd never felt that before. Um, and it was the, I felt so at home and so happy on stage. It, I was like, yeah, I could never do anything else. I don't think so. Yeah. That, 
that was an amazing first gig. It spoiled me. <laughs> oh, nice one. Nice one. So what would Farwa T be doing right now if it wasn't for her music career? Oh, gosh. I really don't know. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Without being a creative in general, do you mean like anything creative? Anything, or... what, yeah. Would you have been a, a doctor, a solicitor? Um, it's crazy would... because I think I've always always known like I said I started dancing when I was three so I've always been in in this at some point um but I think if I wasn't doing anything to do with the arts I think I love and I I love animals so I'd, I'd be doing something to do with animals like maybe a vet or something like that something to you know like a sanctuary for dogs with three legs or cats with one eye <laughs> that I'd, I'd probably be doing something like that this, this is why I said doctor because you, you kind of look like you would be a doctor <laughs> yeah, I look like I'd be a doctor well, Dr Farah Dr Farah can you make it to the to the reception please so yeah Dr Farah uh, maybe I mean don't take medical advice from me now but yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe you never know no 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 that's good so what venues have you performed at venues I've performed at so I've done a lot of theatres um I've done a lot of theatre tours which is great yeah what's uh, it like doing the theatres it's incredible yeah so I've, I've performed at like Leeds Grand um I performed uh my EP um at the O'Meara in London so that oh. was a yeah that was a huge huge bucket list um an incredible night I've performed alongside uh Natalie Gray uh Sodi and Billy Lockett um, so that was for me just incredible and like all my family came down and things like that um, I've just done Euro Pride so I performed in Malta um, just before I went away um, obviously London Prides just a lot of big festivals which is great like Rock the Mo and things like that um, yeah. Isla Man, Isla Wai, um, Indonesia I've I work in Greece sometimes. I'm very, I'm very, very blessed, very blessed to be able to do. Oh, no, it. I can tell. I, I can tell. I can tell you're very blessed, and you're going to be blessed even more. Um, here, here it comes. Oh no! <laughs> what is your worst venue you've played at? Oh my god! Can I not have an, a lot of a lot of artists is and DJs get that them? question? Well, what is your worst, worst venue? Uh, I'm thinking like because I'm like I mean so I wish this was one of those where it's like drink or like pass or because I'd take a shot right now um <laughs> but I think I've just done gigs before where I've been I've been doing this a long time so I've been performing and singing professionally for 14 years so it's a long lot of venues mm -hmm. a lot of here and here which is absolutely fine because you know keeps you humble <laughs> um but I think sometimes there's venues where I mean I've had audience members like back in the day somebody threw a bottle on stage once when I was performing with a group and yeah. like in between um in between songs you know sometimes if you know the artists are speaking or introducing the next song or just having that audience participation and um there was some a group of people stood at the front who made sure that every time the music stops that they could be heard and they were just shouting vital things at us as the you know just the usual um just the shouting stuff. just yeah. want a center of attention yeah uh, so things like that um i've been to venues before where they just like here get changed in this toilet ah! And if you ask for a glass of water, it's like you've asked for a bottle of champagne and you're just like, all I want is the dressing room and a cup of tea. That's all I want. I don't ask for anything else. You know, I'm not not a diva, as they say. Not in that way anyway. So, yeah, so I can't specifically even think of which venues, but just sometimes over the years, I'm just like, this is, like, ridiculous. Yeah, but, so more, more hospitality. The hospitality has been really bad. And it's yeah, like basically, yeah and it just makes me sad because I think you know we don't I don't personally ask for a lot I can't speak for every single artist but 
you know, like I said, if I've got water, a dressing room where I can actually get changed and, you know, do my makeup and get ready for the show and warm yeah. up without being in a disabled toilet when people are knocking on the door, for me, that's not, I'm not able to prepare for a show that way, you know, it's not, it's not nice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, yeah. <laughs> so if, <Phew>. I, if <laughs> you got out of that one, you got out of that one. <laughs> if we... If Farwa T could change anything in the music industry, what would you change? Uh, right now, I would change. I would change the fact that everything is about TikTok views or TikTok followers, and um, and I do know this personally because I have spoken to a lot of people who are you know further on in the industry, um, who I turn to a lot. Or will even post videos themselves and say, you know, I've got to do this trend or I've got to do this because I've got to stay current on TikTok because that's where the views come from. And, and I get that. Like, it's great if you've got fans on there um, and it's great. I love talking to people on my TikTok. I love, you know, dancing. But I do get for an artist, it's hard when you're like forced to post four videos a day because apparently that's what you're supposed to be doing now to gain yeah. any track. Yeah. Oh. Um, and yeah and then it becomes about your views and I know that some you know companies do look at what your views are what your interactions are on social media and it's just I wish sometimes it would just go back to the days of like the spy skills where you would just turn up to an audition and they'd be like yeah we like you we'll take it from there you do your bit we'll do our bit um I'm probably gonna get killed for saying that but I just wish it would just be that instead of you've got a million followers because you posted a video about whatever it went viral. So now you get to do this, you know, it's, that's, that's quite upsetting sometimes because there's some incredible artists I know that should have way more of a platform just based on what they do as an artist, instead of them worrying about jumping on trends and doing little dances and posting four videos a day of themselves, not doing anything related to their artistry. So that's frustrating, but it's also a catch 22 because that can happen to people and you can go viral for your music and then that's a great way so it's it's that thing of I suppose if you just work it right and keep you know being you then I guess you'll get there we'll all get there yeah yeah great answer so what's <laughs> Farwa T's favorite song that you performed that I've performed I love I love performing um, Give Me Something, which is on my AP, and I love performing high notes. They're my favourites to perform. I really like them. Whether it's with a band or whether it's... Because sometimes I do track um, if, I, if I don't have my band with me. Um, but either way, I just... I really vibe with those ones. They're quite, they're quite sassy. So it's nice because, obviously, it's quite painful to listen to some of the songs, but that's me kind of coming out of my sadness era and into my kind of, like, sassy... So I, I like performing them because I get to give a little bit more and show a little bit more of me. Has anything ever, anything embarrassing ever happened on stage? Yes. Performing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you got yeah. tell me one. Tell me one. Um, okay, so I was doing a theatre tour. Yeah. Um, in, it must have, I must have only been 20, very young. Um, and we were doing a number in the very beginning of the show and it involved props. Um, it was like a circusy scene. And one of my props flew off stage and into the audience. And I was like, eh. <laughs> so I just kind of had to go off stage and I was like, oh my days. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing shows before and my shoe flew off into the audience. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have costume malfunctions where like a zip's just come undone and I've had to kind of shimmy off stage and yeah just those sort of things but I always just have to laugh about them because I think if the audiences have noticed it you might as well just laugh about it because yeah. you know it's they it's don't happening. know they don't know that's not part of the pop exactly so I'll, just, I'll usually just make a joke about it because I'm like you know they've seen it so we'll just make a joke and we'll carry on from there yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. A few things like that um a few funny things before where you know and this happens to every singer sometimes if you're doing a show your voice might crack at a random point 
a point that it's never cracked out before and you've sung that song a million times, but sometimes okay. it does it. And then you kind of just like, and nine times out of 10, I've done it so many times with girls on stage and it's so hard not to laugh at each other, but in that, in a funny way, when yeah. we've done talks together, and we've been on the road for four months and you're singing the same songs every day, you know, someone's voice might crack and it's, you can see of us all not trying to laugh at each other because it's just like funny. But other than that, touch wood, <laughs> I've not had any nip slips or anything like that, that I know of anyway. So, but yeah, I think, I think that's it. But yeah, just, I seem to like to throw things into the audience without, by accident, obviously just shoes and props. <laughs> yeah. Just like to throw things at my audience. So but yeah. You, you mentioned being on, on the road for like example, four months. What is that like being on the road for like four months? What do you, give us a little insight in your world of being away on tour for four months. Um, so I've been quite lucky. I There was at one point a company that I worked for that had a tour bus and that was the tour after me. I, I didn't go on that tour because I was doing something else. But I've been quite lucky in the sense of they will put you up in accommodation. Um, so you do say like a travel lodge or a premier in on a night time, but the traveling in between shows and things like that is always a tough one. And it's it, nobody likes living out of a suitcase, but you know, so I've got some great memories and some of my best memories are from being on tour and, you know, walking around all day with the girls and seeing where we're at and going for lunch, having coffees and going, sitting on the beach and, you know, meeting people who are about to come watch the show and things like that. So being on the road has its ups, but it does obviously have its downs because it's just, I mean, you miss home sometimes, you know, you get a bit fatigued because it's... Yeah, it can it, it must be tiring. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's late nights driving to the next place and get a few out. So it's, you know, it's it's one of them. But that's why we do it. We we love it, don't we? I don't know why we love it, but you know, it's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a had a night where you've had multiple gigs? Like oh, you've, yeah. got, you've got to be at one minute. You've got to be at Liverpool for for nine o'clock. Then at eleven o'clock, you've got to be in Manchester. Then you've got to get all the way back to Bath. And then you've got to get to to London. I've had, um, weirdly enough, so there must. I did a venue where they had like a sister venue down the street, um, and they basically was like, "How would you feel about doing this show here and then running over and doing it there?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" It was like, "No, literally running across the road if if everything's set up and ready, where you do the same show." So I've done that before, but then I've also done like two shows a day when you're doing a theater sometimes you do a matinee in an evening but then I tend to do this a lot and I, I need to stop doing it but sometimes when I have a fly out because nine times out of ten a fly out might be on a Saturday or a Friday um and if it's only to like the Isle of Man or if it's to I don't know just anywhere in your like island or anything like that you will come back the the next morning because there's no need to stay for a few days so what I am a sucker for doing is doing gigs and then having to travel straight to the airport to get on a flight, to go to a gig, to get there, to sound check and then do the gig. And that's never good for your health. So I don't advise that because that's not good for you. But I did that. I did a, a show in Austria um, and the night before I had a gig in Liverpool and then had to drive to London and basically get straight on the flight and go to Austria and sound check, and that was a very big gig. So I was like, I'm never doing that to myself again. That was very silly, but yeah. it was amazing, and it was I performed um for the UN that time. So that was that was an amazing gig. wow for the UN. Very, very I was very tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the adrenaline, I, the adrenaline, and the coffee got me through. So we were we were fine. What is a message you would like to give to your fans? Just be nice. I know that sounds silly, but. Lead with love. That's all I say. That's no. it. <laughs> I love. love. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do a big speech, but that's literally that. What I try and live by is just be kind to one another and know that people are going through some things. So just pray for everyone always, no matter what, and just lead with love. <laughs> 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 What have we got to look forward to coming from far away to the future? What have we got? What's coming up? New music and a music video this time. So okay. I did 
I didn't do a music video for my my last EP. I think I might have struggled a little bit with that, honestly, with the subject. Um, but I think, yeah, it, I've got a new song coming out, Superpower, um, and then a video will be alongside it. So I'm very excited to uh, shoot my first music video, so that'll be really cool. How long have we got um, to that is um, ready to be uh, released? When is that? So... At? It might be, it'll either be the end of this year or beginning of next, but I'm keeping, because we're trying to work schedules with the music video and work and everything like that. Um, But I will keep everyone posted on my Instagram. So okay. that will be coming and soon. Maybe, maybe bring you back on here and uh, you can talk about, talk about what is it like um, getting it prepared. And Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love okay. it. Well, I'm in the studio tomorrow, so yeah. So definitely that would be nice to catch you up on everything when it all comes out and talk about the process. That'd be cool. Yeah. So like I said, um, I'm going to put some of your, your videos um, at the end of this so people can uh, get down boogie and see see you at work. Amazing. And see how huge the, these uh, audiences are that you, you play to because like, they're massive. Oh, thank like you. Like Glastonbury kind of size audience. <laughs> it's like, wow. Oh, thank you. Did, yeah, you look, get, did, did you ever get stage fright? As a kid, I did, yeah. But now um, you just want to get on there now, isn't it? It's just yeah, like... I mean, I get nervous before every gig because I think nerves are a good thing. And yes, if it I, is. If I didn't get nervous, then to me, that means I don't care anymore somehow. You know, it's just so nerves are a good thing, but I get yes. nervous every before every gig. Um, no matter where it is or who I'm performing to. But um yeah, I'm very, very blessed. I've had some incredible shows. So yeah. If a young, if a young um 14-year-old um girl come up to you and said, looked up at you and said, um, I want to get in the music industry, what do you recommend I do? What would you say to her? I'd say start writing a song a day, because some of it will be crap <laughs> in the nicest way I still write crap um but keep writing every day um voice note everything um and just try and get get influence from other people um but just be true to you and don't be scared it's it's hard sometimes bearing your soul through a song or be, you know bearing an experience through a song um so it's hard to bear your soul sometimes but to just be yourself and be true to who you are and don't worry about social media and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it has been an honour to speak with you. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for reaching out. I've loved no it. No problem. And I'm looking forward to uh, your your video release. And yep. we'll get you back on here. And um, we'll we'll talk about that. But Amazing. For now, I'll just leave the people with um, some of your... Um, some of your 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 gigs some video footage of your gigs all right but thank you very much um for thank today you. all right thank you I'm soon take care, okay, take Bye. care. Bye.